trying to find the right RV for you, in this video, we tour the 38 FKOK Forest River Sandpiper. Our new home. 2020 new color scheme. But more importantly, we share why this is the right RV for us and what you should look for when looking for the right RV for you. Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. We RV pursuing freedom, adventure, and independence. Because life is so short, guys. It is. And in this video, we're not just going to tour our new home. More importantly, we're going to share what parts of the floor plans are really helpful and what you should consider when looking for the right RV. At the end, we're going to share the three things we absolutely love about this RV. And then we're going to share the three things we had to sacrifice to get the things that we love. Because when you're picking an RV, you're not going to get everything that you want. There will be sacrifices to be made. So hopefully if you watch this video, we'll give you some really good ideas to help you and your family figure out what's going to work best for you. And it'll help you make a better choice when you pick out your first RV. Hey guys, I'm just going to show you around Forest River Sandpiper 38 FKOK. We gave up quite a bit of storage with this rig, but we absolutely love it. Now that we've been RVing for a year, you know, we knew exactly what we wanted and when we walked in this rig, we fell in love. So let me show you the outside of it. Let's start off in the front. This rig has six slides. Now this is where I gave up a lot of storage. My Sandpiper 372 at lock, L-O-K, had almost twice as much storage space. This just pulls out to make it a little bit easier to take those out. This is about the same as we had with the Sandpiper. It's actually a little bit more room in this part. Here again, we have not organized yet. Lippert leveling system. It's a little bit different than last year's Virgin, but I got used to it pretty quick. Carrying two batteries. There's my thousand watt inverter for the uh, refrigerator. This side is about the same as what we had, except this was a little bit wider in our last rig. I had a lot more room for storage here. My 50 amp cord there. Come on in. So let's start in the kitchen. This is insane. I've never seen an RV kitchen this big and everyone that has come and toured our RV has said the same thing. They've never seen a front kitchen like this. Now front kitchens are pretty new um, and this one in particular is just insane. I mean, I can cook over here. I can cut vegetables over here or over here from there or over there. The options are so many, it's incredible. This space brings us together as a family and I love the openness. Well, I am going to start in this corner and just kind of go around in a circle because there's so much to see. The storage in here is insane. Now don't judge us, it's not organized, but it's really far deep. The only thing we'd recommend is maybe put some um, motion sensored lights because it is hard to see back there. But seriously, the storage is incredible. The next thing we have is a residential fridge. This is sitting right on top of the pin, so John says it's safer that way. I don't know what that means, you can ask him. But look at how big this fridge is. It's ridiculous. Look at how much food, now don't judge what we eat, <laughs> but look at how much food we have. Now, another thing I absolutely love is the freezer. It's really big. And freezer is actually really important when you're traveling in areas that don't have a really good grocery store nearby. It's really nice to get things in bulk when they're on special and then freeze them so you always have good food handy. I absolutely love this island. Unlike our other RV that had split sinks, this is all one big unit. All right, so this area over here we're kind of using for electronics because it has the USB chargers along with the station. Having a station that you can kind of plug camera gear is really helpful. We have the microwave, which is not a convection. I don't think it's a convection. And some additional storage down here. 
this area is probably what really inspired me the most. You see, this is turned into kind of our office where we have pens and pencils and, you know, office supplies, which make me happy, but not so much, John. And then this one is all for our sandpiper stuff that has to stay with the RV. But as you can see, this is so much storage. We have a couple, I mean, it's jam packed. We haven't organized, organized yet. <laughs> it's so not organized. Don't That's another this. video. Yeah, but the storage is really big. So all the stuff that goes to our office papers is in here. And it's so nice having a nice big junk drawer and having a nice spot, but really big, deep drawers. These ones are super deep, so I absolutely love that. We have our Berkey. Look at how much room the Berkey has over here. We have our fan above the stove, which you can take care of that right there. And while we're over here, we should probably cover this, which is really, really nice. I love this panel, you guys. It's so much easier than the first one that we had last year. This one's a lot simpler to use. More lights yep. over here. Yep, right on the top left. Also, Forest Rivers in 2020 are coming pre-wired for Samp Zoller. And this system will take three 170 watt panels on the roof. Something that we're gonna look into. This is really bad. I know. It's not organized. So yeah. we, we haven't gotta... started our organizational video yet. This isn't an option on these RVs, but we asked them to put this in because we didn't have enough counter space, so we needed a little bit more. We absolutely love having this extra spot being able to have a little makeshift table whenever we want is fantastic. This over here is typically the dining area that comes on this RV, but we made another modification I'll get to later. See, we really wanted to separate our living area with our working area, so we turned this into an office. We'll be drilling a hole down here for the wires. You can store in here, and these are actually high with high chairs down when we're in transit. John has an office space. I'll pull my laptop and work right next to him. But what's nice is that when we turn it off, we can ignore this and then go into the living space. Now, even though we have tons of counter space, we do primarily cook in this section of the RV. I put the spices over here. I know you guys are probably wondering about that. We might add another spice cabinet like we had before, but just not sure for now. I love how this system has two thin, and then another deep cabinet. We have a bunch more room. Same over here, you have the two more shallow cabinets up here that look pretty much the same. And then you have the deep cabinets right here that I use for our cooking gear. I absolutely love the stove because unlike the previous model that had the glass top, this has no glass to worry about. Very easy to clean. You just remove, wipe down. It's fantastic. And check out this oven. It's adjustable so we can move this up and down, but I really like this oven. It works so much better than our old oven. The back of it is almost like a Gen Air. It's got a vented cook top um, and the burners just work so much better. Uh, we were told by Forest River that all 2020s are getting the new upgraded systems. All 2020 sandpipers. Yes. And well, Sierras. The other thing that we have is a bunch of cleaning storage over here too. So one of the things that you really want to consider when you're looking at the floor plan and trying to find the right RV for you is how often do you cook and what kind of a cook are you? Are you the kind of cook that can cook everything in one pot or do you like some space? Do you like to get creative in the kitchen? Because if you're traveling often, especially if you're going to remote locations, you're not going to have a lot of access to certain grocery stores. So having a big kitchen, having adequate storage in the kitchen and being able to cook at home, it, it's not only healthier, it just saves a ton of money too. The other thing we love about this kitchen is that it's big enough to house, store, and put out all of the kitchen gadgets. Okay, let's go to the living area. So the way that this RV typically comes is that you have the big couch, which is actually converts to a bed. Then you have these two recliners, which are really comfortable and perfect for watching TV. And this area is typically another couch, just like the one behind you. We decided to get the table instead. Reason, well, number one, there's three of us, so that table over there wasn't big enough. But more importantly, we can all have dinner together. That is so important to us. This area comes with chairs that are tied with hooks and the strap system 
much like the other one. But one of the things that we really enjoy about this area is that if this table seems a little small, it lifts really easily and now it's a bigger table. So we'll use the extra chairs, sit right there, and you can get five people comfortably at this table. So we have a total of four chairs like these. Two of them are up at the bar, two of them are here, and then we have the two foldable chairs. Another thing that's fantastic is that both sides have this upper storage, it's out of the way. So this is where we store our Play-Doh, our tea set, and other important RV accessories. In the old RV, we would use the dinette as our pantry, so we've lost that storage. Pull it out. So this is, we're gonna show you the bed and show you the seat. So this turns into a bed. We've already had a guest, my little sister. She said it was comfortable. This leaves a lot of wide room so that you can still walk past your guest when they are here, but really comfortable. And then another bonus, there's a little bit of like a hidden storage area. And we've got two extra chairs. Note to self, keep this. If you ever have extra chairs that are wrapped in a cloth, keep the cloth so that your chairs don't get, you know, messed up one of the things you're going to want to ask yourself is how often do you have people over so you're going to want to have comfortable seating. Okay. putting this away is really easy we absolutely love this seating area it's not only comfortable being able to hang out and watch tv together watch a movie but they did a couple of things that are just fantastic they upgraded the fireplace and uh, I love this touch screen. You can see the temperature, you can change the colors, you can change the color of the fire, just a whole bunch of options. Really easy to deal with. This is awesome. We have a space to charge phones and have wires and keep it out of the way. So we absolutely love that. The other thing I like is the connect. So we can listen to CDs, DVDs, it connects to the TV, um, Bluetooth, so if you have songs on your iPhone. We do all of that through here. It does have stereo speakers inside and out and I just realized the outside ones were on so we owe an apology to our neighbors. So now we're going to look at the bedroom. Well, on the hallway you will see the AC system that covers the front and this controls the fan that's above the living area. Down here are the fuses for the RV. John could tell you more about that. I'm not really sure too much about that. And over here we have the central sis, central vacuum system. And I love this because it comes with hoses and you can get the whole RV just from right there. Um, another big thing about this RV compared to our first one, we have two entrances. And this is a really big deal because when we're traveling, you cannot access the bathroom from the front door. You have to access it from the back door. So. This is nice when we're at the rest stop and we need to take a quick potty break. Good job. All right, and now for the bedroom. We do have the above the bed storage. We have the closets. So there's a King Wi-Fi extender. Yep. We still haven't used it yet, have no. we? No. Okay, well we're figuring out about that. And so there's a drawer. This is a falsy because the water heater's right behind there. We have four drawers over here, all about the same size. And then here's John's closet. He does have multiples of the same shirt, but let's just pretend you didn't see that and continue giving him a hard time because I think that's hilarious. Um, and then three more drawers down here. Pretty good size, you know, pretty deep. And they're all the same. Now, this is another storage area, which is fantastic. I use this for makeup. So we have tons of books over here. We like to keep this area really empty because the less stuff you have, the easier it is for moving day. This is the other part of our central vacuum system, our heaters, and we have some toys for Sage and more books. Now we're gonna check out the bathroom. So this bathroom has about the same storage as our last one did, except the ceilings are much higher, which I like because when there is moisture, it's really nice to have that extra space. It does have a max air fan that works pretty well and it's relatively low. I mean, compared to other ones, 
that's pretty good. Um, so we have all of our toiletries in here, lots of room, shampoo, conditioner, and such. And then this area over here, we need to get a shelf still, but this is our laundry. Yes, we still do have this guy, but it turns out I was using way too much detergent. You're only supposed to use a tablespoon or two, and I was using a whole cup, so user error. Check out how light and bright the shower is in the nice skylight. It's also pretty big. I mean, you can you have plenty of room around here, and the bench seat is really nice too. Do you want to open up underneath the cabinet space in the way? We can. Oh, excellent. Pretty big cabinets. So as promised, we're gonna talk about the things that we absolutely love about this RV and why we selected it, but we're also going to give you the three things that we had to give up in order to get the things that we really wanted. When it comes to RVs, guys, especially when you're living in it full time, you're never gonna get everything that you want. There is no such thing as a perfect RV. So you're always gonna give up something to gain something. So some of the things that we absolutely love about this RV is the huge kitchen. We love it. And alongside that goes the huge living area. Absolutely love it. This was very important for us because when finding the right RV, you have to be true to yourself. The reality is we spend a lot of time inside the RV. And I love to cook. I mean, this is a dream kitchen in an RV, guys. We have almost 16 linear feet of countertop, which is unheard of in an RV. And you know what I really love? I love that Mercedes and I can move around oh, in yeah. front of the front. I can be doing dishes and she Look, can be doing dishes. We're Look at not this. running into We can each have other. three people from here to there, you know, three steps forward. We love this. Ooh. The other thing that we absolutely love about this RV is the separate working area from living area. Those of you who work remotely know that you either never leave work or you never leave home. The other thing that we absolutely love about this is the lighter and brighter colors. Yeah. It makes a big deal. Especially... It makes a huge difference. And Mercedes yeah. used to talk about this all, time, all the time and I was like, what does it matter? When you live in one of these for a year, you know why it matters. Everyone has this idea that we'll be outside all the time and so so the RV is really just to sleep in. That wasn't our case. We spent a lot of time indoors. Weather sometimes doesn't cooperate. Right. So you need to be really comfortable. So we gave up a lot to have that comfortable living area. So now we're gonna discuss the things that we had to give up in order to get the things that we absolutely love. The first thing that we had to give up was having the second bedroom and the loft. We gave up a lot of storage space for open and clear space. It was nice having that extra bedroom with privacy so that if you did have visitors, you know, you'd have that space. On the flip side though, we don't really have visitors stay that often. Right. And those areas were really more for storage space. So what it's forcing us to do is to downsize to another yeah. level, which is a good thing. We're ready for it. We're downsizing in exchange for the open living space. Yeah, we thought that second bedroom was gonna be for Sage and that she'd sleep in there and play in there. The truth is Sage loves being with us constantly. She was really in there by herself. That space was pretty much going unused. It was a massive storage bin for us. And we realize now how much of storage it was. The other place that we lost storage in is in the dinette set. We had two storage areas underneath those built-in bench sheets that was enough room for us to keep all of our dry goods, our canned goods. So we gave up also storage in the master closet. Yes. So master closet, the dinette booth, the second bedroom and the loft, but in exchange for that, we have a really nice, bright living area. We, yes. spend, we spend so many awake hours in this area that for us, it was a good trade-off. The other thing that we gave up in order to have this RV and this layout was that with the other layout, when everything was closed up, we had access to the bedroom, the bathroom, and the fridge through our one entrance. Now we don't, we have to go in through the second entrance to go to the bathroom. The master bedroom is not accessible when the slides are in and we cannot access the refrigerator when the slides are in. That's a really good point. So when you're looking for an RV, before you pull the trigger, make sure you have them pull all those slides in so you can figure out what type of access you're gonna have. I sh I've shot some video of what it's like when this is closed up. We have no access to the master bedroom when we're on the move. We have to go through the second door to get to the bathroom. We can't get to the first door. We also have to do a little bit of a squeezing between the island and the stove to be able to access the refrigerator. 
So remember, every RV is gonna be a little bit different. Make sure it's closed and you can see what the access is gonna be. Another thing is, is that in our last RV on Sandy, we could carry 2,500 pounds of contents. In this RV, it's a little over 2,000 pounds of contents. That total weight has to include what is we're carrying in our fresh water tank and any other tanks we have. So not only did we lose the room to store additional items, we don't have the weight either. So it's better that we do kind of slim down and actually go smaller and have less items than we ever imagined we could have. And we're doing just great with it. You're probably noticing in the corner, there is a playlist of other Sandpiper layouts. So we've gotten to tour a total of five different Sandpiper Forest River fifth wheel layouts. And if you click on that, you'll get to see the other layouts that we've seen and get our perspective, not just as full-time RVers, but also as Sandpiper RV owners.